The newest Fang from Baofeng is the 5RM. This one's a little bit larger in size. Got a little bit different menu and different screen than what we're used to seeing on a Baofeng. So we're going to go through the menus today and put it on the tester to see what it looks like. Hint, it doesn't look good. These Fang videos do pretty well, and I really liked using the Tiny SA on the last couple, so I decided to do another one. I do want to show you, this thing is large for a Baofeng, and I'm going to set it down next to a few other radios that you might recognize here. Make sure I get them all into the shot, because I want to show you just exactly how large this is. Right there. Okay, so this is your Yezu FT65 on the far left. This is the Radtelf RT490 that I did a video on a while back. This is a TID Radio uh, H8 Generation 2. Now, TID Radio sent me this, and I haven't done a video with it yet because they keep changing their mind on what they want me to say. They're like, oh, there's an update, or there's an update, there's an update. So I'll probably do something like that soon. This is that Quanshang UVK5 that I did a while back that we ordered 222. And this, on the far right, that one is the Baofeng 5RM. So you can see how much larger it is than all of the other radios. The, the radio that's probably closest in size to a UV5R, which I don't have a UV5R here. The only UV5R I actually own is the 5i3 BTEC, which is basically is the same form factor as UV5R. The FT65 is roughly the same size as a 5R. So you see how much larger that is. It's taller this way. It's higher off the table this direction. And it's about the same width this direction here. And when we turn this on... Channel mode. Channel mode. You could... Whoa, see, I just I just rested the PTT against the FT65. You can see that the screen is very similar to the Radtel that we had. So these two right here almost look like the if I hit menu on this right here, menu, menu right there, and menu right there, you can see these menus are very similar right here. This one's white text and this one's red text. But the the fact that this uh, the menu comes up down here and then it's an up down arrow system just like this one is. We're going to go up here. We're going to say software version 1.03, hardware version 2.0 on that one. That one right there says that it's firmware uh, 0 0.14 and hardware V01. Cancel. And the screen goes off too quickly on that. I don't like the red text. I think it's harder to read than this white text is here. You can obviously see that better than that. And uh, it's it's true that way in the, you know, looking at it uh, without going through the camera as well. So that's... That's what that is. But anyway, this is a larger Baofeng than what we're used to. Like I said a minute ago, you got a PTT button here. We've got this uh, yellow button or this orange button on the side over here. That turns on your FM broadcast stereo. This button over here on the side turns on the flashlight. Got on, got flashing, and then off. That's the three options there. Over on this side, we've got the standard K connector for the... Uh, programming, speaker mic, that kind of thing. It does have a USB-C chargeable battery right there. So if you pop that up, it's got a USB-C port. So that's really good right there. And it's got this uh, release on the batteries, this button up top here. Oops, and throw the battery across the room. This is a BL5RH battery, 2,500 milliamp hours and 18.5 watt hours. Charge limit voltage of 8.4 volts. And then we can see the fang right here. And it's got, uh, model is 5RM, output power is 10 watts. Interesting. Okay, I'm glad I turned it down then. And then you've got your FCC stamp right here, although I'm not really seeing an FCC number. Sometimes I think they just put that stamp on it for, you know, <laughs> because why not? But anyway, so there is your 5RM right there. I'm curious now to see what it might do on the power meter. So why don't we give that a whirl real quick. I'm going to take my power meter over here. We're going to do the tiny SA here in just a second and see how dirty it is. And then I'm going to put it on the power meter because I just, I forgot that it was 10 watts, honestly. So we're going to test the 10 watts on both two meters and 440. Stick around. We'll get right to it. Okay. Setting this thing up and adding it to my, uh, or attaching it to my MFJ 849 power meter right here. I got it on the VHF UHF side. I can tell you right now, I already don't like it because the power, the PTT button on the left side of the radio sticks out. And every time I grab the radio, I key it up mistakenly. So I can already tell you right now that I don't really like the way it protrudes out like that. 
you grab the radio from the side and you just hit it automatically. I set the radio on the desk a couple of times and bumped it into something. The rad tail next to him meant to go and it keyed up. So I don't think I really like that a whole lot, but um, you know, to each his own, I suppose. All right, so I've got it set on, we're on low power top band, high power bottom band. Bottom band is 441.0. We're gonna do all three. It does have three power settings. It's got low, medium, and high. All right, so we're on low power here on, uh, yeah, on the top band. 146.52, of course. And on low power, it is doing about one and a half watts. Okay, okay, that'll work. So now I'm gonna change it to high to uh, medium power. We're gonna go to menu. Transmit power is right there. Middle, confirm middle, exit. And it has an M above the 146 now. 2.3 watts. It's not really looking good for a um, 10 watt output on high, but okay. Okay, so now it's on high right there. Good deal. All right, now high power. Okay, 7.5 watts. Okay, you can see the SWR is good. Reflections almost zero. All right, so 7.5 watts. I'm going to kind of move it around here and see if i got to shorten my cable, but I don't. Okay, so that's, that's, that's decent. It's advertising 10 watts. It's showing me 7.5 watts. Now I'm going to go to the bottom band. All right, so we're on low power on the bottom band right there. 1.8 again. That looks good. 441. We're going into a dummy load also. Middle power, 3.8. Almost 4 watts on mid power on 440. Okay. And it's doing about 8.2, 8.3 watts on power on 440. High power, 441.0. So, okay. Not quite the advertised 10 watts. I'm going to say this because I've said this in, a, in the past in other videos. It is very possible you will get one of these that does just fine, that has the, the correct output power that, uh, that it advertises. It's very possible you, you'll get one that does half the power of what I just showed you on high power. And the reason for that is poor quality control. Some of them work the way it's advertised and some of them don't. Now, in reality, you're not gonna notice that much difference between 7.5 and 10 watts, but it's advertised as a 10 watt radio and I'm not getting 10 watts out of it on my calibrated MFJ meter. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com where you can find multiple facets of getting your ideas to come to life. Printed circuit boards, flexible circuit boards, CNC machine printing, professional 3D printing. They do everything and you can just fill out a form on their website, upload the files to them and they will send you a quote and then send you the finished product when it's ready. So check out PCBWay.com. Link is in the description below. And be sure to thank them for sponsoring Ham Radio 2.0. All right. Let's put it on the tiny essay and see what that looks like. So I've already calibrated this thing, but I'm going to go through the menu again just to show how I did it. So we're going to go to measure and um, harmonic, and I'm going to type in 146.52, M for megahertz, and it asked me to do it again. M for megahertz, like that. And then we're going to go back into the menu, and we're going to go to... no, nope, I never can remember where that second menu is. Yeah, level, EXT gain, and we're going to go minus... 40 times 1. Just like that. That moves your line up there. Okay, and now we're going to make sure I'm in the right... And I don't want to do it on high power because this, this attenuator is rated for 10 watts, but I don't know. Okay, we got about... We got less than 5 watts on middle power, so I'm going to do it on middle power. Exit and 146.52, uh, rather. And there we go. Ooh, wow, look at that. That's terrible. Hey, I've got a radio on. KC5HWB testing. Turn that TID radio off. Ouch, look at that. Woo! All right, here's your negative 40 mark down uh, down right here at the bottom. This thing is uh, first and second harmonics. Second harmonics up at 20. Third harmonics around negative 10. And fourth harmonics just above negative 10. That's ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Second harmonics at, uh, is at, at 293. And the fourth delta is at 439. So, yeah. Ouch. Okay. I knew it was going to be ugly because I've seen other people test this before but I haven't tested it myself. And like I said a minute ago, the quality control at the Fang factory is not good. Maybe I would get a good one. I don't know. doesn't look like I did. Let's change this real quick. I'm going to go back in here to uh, marker, or no, not marker, measure. That's what I'm looking at. Harmonic, and we're going to go to 441.00 megahertz, 441.0 megahertz. And then I'm going to go back in and make sure that my level is negative... 40 times 1. There we go, just like that. And I do want to change the power because it's on high still. Now it's on mid-power. 
So that should be doing like three to four watts, which is plenty for our attenuator that's rated at 10 watts. And we're gonna key this up. Takes it a second. Not as bad. This one should be, this number one over here should be high. That's the one that, that's the only one that should be high. The second harmonic is right at zero, right just above, um, maybe negative five. And then it's got an eighth harmonic way the heck over here at like negative 15. And it says that's at 2.954 gigahertz. <laughs> You could almost talk on the Wi-Fi band with this thing. Well, there you go right there. Okay, now the second harmonic has disappeared. And now it's shown that's basically what you want to see right there. Uh, the eighth harmonic's still a little high. Yeah, that's basically what you want to see right there. So, once again, not great quality from the Baofeng. I didn't really expect this to be good. Because, like I said, I've seen other YouTubers test this model of Baofeng, and it was not pretty. So that's what it is. Now, does that mean you shouldn't buy it? It's a $30 radio, and it should be treated as a $30 radio. It does have 999 memory channels. They say it's long range. That's They say that about everything, though. It's got this better-looking antenna on it. Most of the Fang antennas are kind of junk. This looks more like a Nagoya antenna right here, which is going to be a better quality than your standard stock uh, UV5R or UV82 Baofeng antenna. In my opinion, it is. I should put some of those on a tester and see what they actually look like because I've never done that with an HT antenna. My favorite HT antenna is the Signal Stick, so you can go uh, go check that out. I'll put a link to Signal Stick in the description below. You can go check that out. It offers you a lot of options, including USB-C charging, 999 memory channels, a nice-looking color display, better looking than the, the standard uh, Baofeng monochrome display. It does splatter all over 2 meters like several of these have done. And 440 looked pretty good. There might be a way to hack it for 220. I haven't looked at that for this specific model, but a lot of Baofengs you can hack for 220. Make your own decision. Just be aware that it might be dirty, and uh, you might have some repeater owners telling you to get off their repeater because it's uh, splattering on the 220 pan next to it or something like that. You never know. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Thanks for watching.